Wouldn't it be very strange if one day you happened to wake up and had all your normal feelings, thoughts, opinions, but instead of being able to use them, you had to agree with everything somebody said? Boy, it's a good thing that never happens in real life. Well, the Pope exposed himself. You ever realize all of a sudden it's going to be a very, very long day? For the true agent of Satan that he really is. Now, I'm very slow to use language like this because I don't call other believers, so to speak, agents of the devil. I don't make heresy hunter videos. I don't call out false teachers or false prophets. That's not what this ministry is about. I think if there's one thing we can all agree on with a very sober-minded perspective, it's that Big Nick is completely right in every way here. Big Nick is not the kind of guy to just casually call out other people for disagreeing with his opinions. He's certainly not the type of person to call other people agents of Satan or false Christians or suggest that they are in some way being manipulated by the Dark Lord into some kind of terrible evil that will destroy humanity and other people. Big Nick, as I'm sure we can all agree, is very moderate in his statement and statements and speech. However, the Pope is the representation of Catholicism, which many people believe is Christianity, although it is a little bit different. And I'm being generous when I'm saying a little bit different. Like Big Nick, I am also something of an expert on Christianity, being that I come from the one true church, uh, Protestantism. And coming from the one true church, I agree in full. Catholicism is obviously not true Christianity. It's a good thing that Protestants are the ones that put together the canonical books originally, and Protestants started the Christian church in the first place, or else we might have something of what you'd call a a big problem theologically. However, even Catholics are now condemning the Pope's latest actions in this very dangerous statement that he made, which shows that he does not believe in Jesus Christ at all. You know, fellas, I think Big Nick is really on to something here. What if the most important so-called Christian in the world doesn't actually believe in Jesus? What if, in fact, like my mom says, the Pope believes in Satan? But before we go deep into this, let's get into the intro. What's going on, guys? Well, I certainly appreciate Big Nick keeping it light and not hitting us with anything too difficult out the gate. You know, I gotta say, it is something of a very strange day for me indeed, at Large Nicholas. Thank you for asking. Before we get into today's video, if you guys like Christian content, please give this video a like, subscribe to my channel down below if you are new, and turn on my post notifications so you never miss a new video. Boy, let me tell you, am I glad when things can be non-controversial because I agree in full. Do all of those things on this channel if you have yet to do those things on this channel. Without further ado, let's get into it. Pope Francis is under a lot of controversy after revealing that he does not believe Jesus Christ is the only way to God. Recently, at a multi-faith summit in Singapore, he spews blatant heretical doctrine that all religions are a path to God. Ever the astute observer, I'm glad Big Nick is correct on this one. It does seem like Pope Francis has a knack for making heretical statements like, everybody deserves respect, and everybody deserves to be treated well regardless, and uh, their religions, although they may not be the same as mine, are also worthy of respect. It's a good thing Big Nick is here to point out that no, nobody should be respected except the one true church, Protestantism. As well as many other unbiblical claims. Obviously, any Bible-believing Christian knows that Pope Francis is no stranger to observe weird doctrine. Big Nick nails it once again. I've heard that Pope Francis does believe in some really weird stuff. For example, there is this book called The Bible that being a Christian, I have, of course, never read, but I'm sure if I did read it, I would find there's a lot of really, really strange, bizarre stuff in there that no one in their right mind should believe. And it's good that I haven't read it and neither has Big Nick. However, this type of rhetoric even has the most devout Catholics denouncing Pope Francis himself. The Pope has been paving the way for the one world religion that the Book of Revelation describes for a long time now. With his most recent antics involving the construction of the Abrahamic Interfaith Center, which involves Muslims, Jews, and Christians all coming together to worship God. Big Nick makes a really good point here. How is it that the Pope could possibly think it's a good idea to collect people from three religions that have nothing in common and put them all 
all under the same roof. This, ladies and gentlemen, is communism. However, Jews and Muslims are both separated from God since they deny Jesus Christ as the only way to the Heavenly Father, which is clear that Pope Francis has already rejected basic Christian doctrine even before this recent scandal. Let's take a look at Pope Francis's satanic beliefs. If there's one thing I know about as somebody raised by Protestants, it's the devil. You can see him everywhere. Some people even say if you look hard enough, you can see him right behind me at this very moment. But uh, that's neither here nor there, so let's just talk about the devil's beliefs for a second. What are the devil's beliefs exactly? Well, obviously, he wants you to think for yourself. That, of course, is very bad. Don't do that. Don't. The Bible says, lean not on your own understanding. Actually, I can't even quit. And soon we can compare his New Age doctrine to actual scripture so you can understand the importance of knowing the Bible for yourself rather than trusting feel-good messages that do nothing but tickle people's ears on their way to hell. It's a good thing we don't have to worry about Big Nick tickling anyone's ears for a, a multiplicity of reasons. Because every religion is a way to arrive at God. Fuck you and this bullshit. But that's what this is, you know. Satanic black magic. Sick shit. Sono, dirò una comparazione. Sono come diverse lingue, diverse idiomi per arrivare lì. See, I don't understand how anybody can trust this guy just from the bizarre, strange, weird language he's speaking in this clip. What is that? Sort of a comparison, an example would be they're sort of like different languages in order to arrive at God. Ma Dio è Dio per tutti. But God is, is God for all. E come Dio è Dio per tutti, noi siamo tutti figli di Dio. And if God is God for all, then we're all sons and daughters of God. There were so many false statements within that first minute that I just watched, but after that last point, I had to stop it. Boy, I'm right there with you, Big Nick. Forget all this fancy learning stuff. The only thing we need is the one book that neither one of us are ever going to read, frankly. Just to show you guys that this is not biblical at all. We are not all sons and daughters of God. We are all made in God's image, but the Bible clearly states in John 1.12 when referring to the incarnation of Jesus by stating that the word became flesh, but to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. You only have the right to be a child of God if you receive Jesus Christ. I, for one, am glad we have Big Nick to read various out-of-context Bible passages to make his points for us so that we don't have to do a single iota of thinking for ourselves about Jesus or religion or heaven or hell or any of this. It's a good thing there are people like Big Nick out there who don't have any agenda whatsoever, unlike the Pope and just want to help. If you reject Jesus, you reject God entirely, and therefore you are not a part of God's family, which would not make you a son or daughter of God. This is basic Christianity. Pope Francis also makes the false claim that different religions are just different languages with the same meaning. This is also not true because everybody from every different religion knows that they all contradict each other. You know, there's a lot of discourse these days about nuance and how important it is to be nuanced in our thinking and our speaking, about how important it is to try and understand the perspectives of other people very different than we are because the world is a complicated place and everybody has different ways of thinking about it. And I, for one, am glad Big Nick recognizes this is all a load of fucking horse shit. How can Buddhism be a path to God when Buddhists don't even believe in God? How can Hinduism be a path to the one God when Hinduism believes in 30 million gods? How can Islam be the path to the Christian God when they deny that Jesus was even crucified? And how can Christianity be the same as these other gods in these other religions when it clearly says that Jesus Christ is the only way to the true and living God? All irony and jokes and running gags aside here, Big Nick actually stumbled onto something that is genuinely very important. He's on the precipice. He's dancing on the edge of a very important thought. He's just a moment away from an incredible realization that if he were to make it, it would change his life forever, that these religions all make claims of exclusivity, and not a single one has anything to back it up, and yet they all claim to have the same experiences. There's something fundamentally fishy about that, if you ask me. And of course, Big Nick is just going to blow right past that and keep going on 
on about how great Jesus is. So I'm not sure where Pope Francis is getting this idea that religions are just different languages with the same meaning, unless he's either clueless about his own faith or he's working for the devil into leading the masses into the end times apostasy that the Bible talks about. If there's one thing I'm pretty sure Big Nick hasn't actually heard of, it's the concept of diplomacy. Who is the Pope fundamentally? Yes, he is the leader of a religion that has over a billion adherents, and that's a pretty big number. That's a lot of people. As the representative of a whole religion and his own little city-state, he kind of has to be diplomatic. Now, he may not believe everything he's saying. He may just be saying it to be nice. I don't know. I'm not in the guy's head. But again, if you are in a position like that, you do have to be diplomatic. Plenty of religious groups work together and say very nice things about themselves and other people and things they don't believe about themselves and other people, and that's just how it goes. That's what diplomacy is. You're nice to people who are technically probably your enemies, although in this case, I'm not sure they're enemies at all. Uh, it's just basic diplomacy. I don't think he's saying anything really profound here, although I guess you could go back to that terrible split with Vatican II, and a lot of people are said of Anticists because Vatican II sort of accepted that the body of Christ is much bigger than the Catholic Church had made it seem since the Reformation, but that's another story for another time. The key point here is just Big Nick doesn't seem to understand what diplomacy is. Big Nick doesn't seem to understand that the Pope is trying to be nice. He's trying to build bridges, not burn them down, because, yeah, we live in a complicated world. We live in a world that's torn apart by all kinds of wars, destruction. I mean, look at the... the the crisis right now in Israel and Palestine. Look at all these crises we've got based on religion. This is a time for bridge builders. No, this isn't proof that uh, the Pope has some incredible plan to become the Antichrist and create a one-world religion. I think, frankly, if you think a one-world religion is possible at a time like this, you are delusional. In fact, if anything, religious conflicts have gotten worse than ever, and I think that's part of why the Pope is saying what he's saying. He's not saying that your religion is exactly as valid as mine. He's saying, hey, uh, if we don't resolve our problems and try to be nicer to each other, we're probably in some very big trouble. My God is more important than yours. But my God is more important than your God. Is that true? There's only one God, and each of us is a language, so to speak, in order to uh, arrive at God. There are different paths. Understood? This satanic lie that religions are all different paths to the same destination goes directly against what Jesus Christ taught himself in the Bible. The Lord said in John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You know, I may not have the qualifications of somebody as educated as Big Nick on these subjects, but there's like a million different ways you could read that. I mean... That verse, on first glance, does indeed appear very simple, but I think people read that differently among different Christian traditions, and always have and always will. And to think that your interpretation is necessarily correct and someone else's is the result of Satan just sounds kind of silly. Like, it's very juvenile, isn't it? It's very juvenile to go, my interpretation of this is absolutely correct, and yours is the work of big bad devil dude. Isn't that just, isn't that silly? Come on. There's no sugarcoating this, but Pope Francis is quite literally an agent of Satan who is being used by the global elite to water down the true biblical gospel on the world stage. Because this is exactly what must occur in the last days. Well, I, for one, wish these last days would hurry up and show up because... I'm 34 years old, and I've been hearing about these last days for the entirety of my days on Earth, and in fact, it's nothing new, of course. I mean, it definitely seems like the followers of Jesus very early on in New Testament days thought that Jesus was supposed to come back any minute. I mean, there were letters from Paul saying that those who had died would be taken up into the clouds first. The reason why he wrote that letter is people were convinced that those who had died before the second coming of Jesus were necessarily condemned or cursed. So they've been expecting it for a very long time. These end times have been coming since the very beginning, and the very beginning is, of course, a very long time ago. 
I don't think we're any closer today than we were back then. In fact, if I'm being honest, I think a one-world government would be a great thing, if, if we could manage it. But I think, obviously, considering the vast inequalities between different uh, societies, that kind of thing is effectively impossible at the moment. And uh, before anybody accuses me of being a communist, which, fair enough, I guess, I am not. I'm pretty much a centrist, uh, neoliberal, kind of libertarian-leaning. I'm not like a super, super communist person. If anything, I'm more of like a Star Trek politics person. I'd like to see a Star Trek future where we all just embrace reason and try to overcome scarcity with the tools of capitalism, most likely. But that's neither here nor there. The point is... Um, this is not some great scheme to create a one-world religion. That's just not going to happen. It should be more than the parent that's not going to happen. The Pope saying nice things about Muslims and Jews and Hindus and whoever else. This is not going to create a one-world religion. Such a thing is, frankly, impossible. Uh, I mean, well, for, well, for one thing, what are you going to do about atheists? There's a whole lot of atheists out there. You think I'm going to convert just because the Pope says nice things about me or other religions? Well, no, I don't think I am. And my audience, of course, most of you are atheists, I assume. There are some Christians out there, I know, because you mention it as often as humanly possible. Are you going to convert just because the Pope says nice things about you and other religions? Well, no, of course not. If somebody shows up performing miracles, are you going to be like, well, that's obviously got to be God? No, you're going to be like, well, that's some kind of a scam. That's some kind of a charlatan. So... Anyway, the whole thing just sounds increasingly ridiculous. The worst, the worst, I mean, Big Nick has never been the most attached to reality and its concepts, and it seems like his idea of reality is just drifting further and further away from real reality itself. I wrote an article on this recently, and uh, I ended up removing it and writing a new one in its place. I'll link that down below if you feel like reading anything that I have written. Uh, I don't know if I'm a great writer, but I tried. I covered the QAnon phenomenon because I am fascinated with it. And uh, for you people into more secular things, or at least more non-political things, I covered uh, UFOs. So I'll link that down below. You can check it out if you want to. That encompasses a lot of my thoughts about people like reality, or well, sorry, Big Nick, whose uh, reality testing fails. And if you don't know what reality testing is, you read the article, I explain what reality testing is and what happens when it fails, as is the case with our good golden boy, uh, Big Nick. So thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Um, I can't really say if I've enjoyed making this video. This is my first one back in a long, long time. And Big Nick is always just something else, isn't he, folks? Isn't our golden boy just always something else? So, well, it happened. We did it. Uh, people have been demanding it. I am a person of the people. I gave you what you want. Now shower me in praise. Thank you for watching. I hope you have a great one. Unless you're Big Nick, in which case I hope you don't. Uh, thanks.